I'm Anus Martirosian. I'm representing CRISP, as said. Um, actually, I want to, uh, to introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I have graduated from uh, uh, Faculty of Mathematics at uh, Yerevan State University. Then I have, then I have experience in uh, teaching at uh, both Yerevan State University and uh, American University. And I'm glad to see some of my students here. Uh, and then I have uh, switched to, um, uh, to working at CRISP to do some uh, research and machine learning stuff. At first, uh, I was um, a machine learning engineer at CRISP, but now I am more uh, involved in management stuff. Um, what we do at CRISP, we try to empower people to become a better communicator. Um, the origin uh, of CRISP was actually a problem that was quite interesting in terms of research and in terms of um, machine learning uh, approaches. Uh, the problem was, um, uh, is it possible to remove the noise from a noisy audio stream? And uh, we, have uh, we have started to work on the problem uh, in the time when we had, uh, okay, uh, we had quite uh, quite few data uh, to uh, to give you imagination. We had only one to uh, uh, 500 uh, audio files at the moment when we have started to build the algorithm. And um, you know, but the first prototype was built on this very very, very small uh, data set. But uh, as a prototype, that was a quite good example, and it gave a hope that the problem is solvable, and uh, actually around this prototype, the company was built. Um, the next step uh, towards, uh, towards um, build, uh, uh, building the algorithm and solving the problem was obvious that it, it was the data, and we have uh, started to collect uh, the data for solving the problem. Um, actually, we have got um, more than uh, 10,000 uh, audio files at the moment, and it was improving the quality of the, uh, of the algorithm very much. But at some point, we have reached the limit of the data, and um, it comes that the data quality was uh, the most important one at that point, and uh, we have started to clean up the data. Uh, so, um, when you build an algorithm, at first you need to um, achieve some quantity of data because it's critical. But um, to achieve product ready uh, uh, quality for the algorithm, you need to uh, think about the quality as well. And at that point, we have started to clean up the data. Uh, we didn't have any re uh, resources. Uh, at that point, uh, at that moment, and uh, actually, we uh, started to listen those uh, all the audio files ourselves to make sure that they meet our quality standards for for the data. And that process uh, leads uh, lead uh, led us to having uh, a model that was ready to go to production and ready to ship to users. Uh, and the next step, uh, the next step uh, in, in the process of building the, uh, the uh, noise cancellation algorithm it's itself was to work um, hard on uh, testing methodologies. Uh, because this is also, also a very important part um, of building ML algorithms. Because you need to uh, test on right data sets, choose right me uh, metrics to, uh, f uh, to lead your uh, algorithm in correct direction. Um, I, I don't have much time to work, uh, to talk uh, a lot about the metrics. If you are interested, I can explore more in networking sessions. Um, and at the end, at this moment, we have reached a, a phase that we have um, a new innovative uh, neural network, uh, which works with HD audio streams and um, consumes low power and etc. cetera. Um, 
And the question is, what's, what's the next step? Okay, it's, it's um, clear that uh, we are solving noise cancellation problem and what could be the next step for, uh, for this approach? And actually, uh, the next step for us is to build a noise cancellation which is personalized. So if the previous algorithm were um, intended to separate noises from uh, human speeches, uh, now we build an algorithm that is supposed to separate human voices as well. Um, here we had um, two approaches, one of which is abandoned now because it didn't give uh, quite uh, good results. Uh, the first approach was to uh, uh, to have a recording from a user, to ask a recording from a user and train on that recording. Uh, but actually this approach was not good enough because um, uh, uh, the network was learning not only the speech characteristics but the device characteristics as well. And when you were changing the device, uh, all was uh, not working uh, uh, and your voice was breaking out. Uh, current approach is much more better and I hope that in the near future our users will be able to, um, to try it out on, on this side. Uh, and it's based on um, separating all human voices into categories and, uh, and uh, during, uh, in the audio file find the category of your choice and remove uh, voices of other categories. Um, again, uh, this is uh, already in a stage that is too clear to be shipped to the, uh, too close to be shipped to the users. Um, but actually, uh, CRISP is not uh, only concentrated on noise cancellation problem, uh, but we, uh, we intend to build an AI communicator at the end. Uh, the first step towards this is um, to allow users to uh, beautify the video stream as well, beside the audio stream, beautify the video stream as well. And the first step here is to, um, to uh, allow users to change their background. And um, currently we are working on video segmentation algorithm. Again, it is too close to be shipped to the users, so you will learn uh, a lot in, in the near future from CRISP. Um, we, we have also another algorithm that are uh, coming soon, voice activity detection, uh, that uh, detects um, the, voice and, um, uh, the, vo the voice from the audio stream, uh, ringtone detection that uh, detects ringtones of different applications. Um, uh, the next cool feature is emotion detection that is going to assist you when you are talking boring, or something like that. Uh, Chris may um, ask you to be some uh, to add some enthusiasm into your speech and uh, things like that. Uh, also, Chris is going to assist you when you are using a lot of filler words like mm, hmm, and um, uh, Chris is going to uh, tell you if it finds out that you are uh, reaching out the limit of uh, using this kind of words. And uh, eventually, at the end of the year, we, we want to also have a full ISR algorithm that will allow, you, allow users to generate meeting minutes, um, uh, generate sum summaries from meeting minutes, and it will, uh, I guess it will uh, uh, simplify the whole uh, audio and video communication process for the users. Okay, I have skipped some slides, but I, I want to uh, go back, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, what we have built so far is a noise cancelling application, we, uh, but the vision is to build an AI communication, com communicator, actually. And um, I want to mention that the biggest achievement that uh, we, um, we have um, achieved is um, a professional team, uh, an R&D team, which consists of 30 people right now. And actually, we have plans to expand even more. Um, so you, if you feel um, uh, you can fit into the team, uh, we are happy to talk about. <laughs> OK, that's all. Thank you. Any questions? 
Uh, hi, I'm Mariana. I'm mm -hmm. from DSP. And uh, my question is, uh, and thank you for the presentation, first of all. My question is, from the business point of view, um, uh, what, is, uh, what are the uses of the pr uh, personal voice detection? Mm -hmm. uh, because I know about CRISP, and uh, yeah, I realized that voice cancellation is a problem that we had, uh, but I don't really understand from the business point of view. If you could tell me a little bit. Uh, actually, any user can be, um, can use that model. Uh, w what we ask, uh, what we are going to ask from a user is just 10, 15 um, uh, seconds of audio file. Then we determine which category uh, it belongs to and uh, um, uh, run uh, the audio stream through uh, um, personal model for, for that person. So anyone can use it. Yeah, and uh, what companies are going to buy the product? Um, uh, my question was more about that, like the product of detecting uh, a uh, voice of a person. Uh, it, it will be part of CRISP uh, application itself. So um, if you are a user, you can... Um, it, it's not uh, live yet, but we expect to have it in three months. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm uh, You spoke about uh, the algorithms that will be able to recognize uh, the emotion of people. Yeah. And uh, it will uh, um, hint people to smile or something like that. But uh, I would like to understand it will uh, just ask people to smile or uh, in the video stream it will uh, change the surface and the more smiling and <laughs> surfaces. Well, that, that's in a long-term roadmap to, to do things like that. Actually, the first one that we want to do, not just uh, add a, a smile, but maybe remove filler words. It's, uh, it's more useful, I guess. But yeah, that, that may be something in long-term uh, roadmap. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I have a question. As mm -hmm. I know, uh, the, your algorithm is the best in the world, and I want to understand how uh, it, it uh, um, like uh, the most established companies can't get uh, the such a result as yours. Mm -hmm. I want to know what is your competitive advantage? Um. <laughs> how you have accomplished to get such a result? Actually, at the be beginning, when you formulate the problem, a, um, um, the first reaction is that this is not possible to do. And um, we were the first that have tried. We, we were not afraid of uh, the complexity of the problem. We have tried and um, gained some results. And after that, all the giants around the world started to work in this direction. Okay, and what is your competitive advantage? Um, what problems do other companies have? For example, maybe they uh, can't uh, support the real-time uh, update. Uh, actually, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's also a problem, the performance side, and we are improving it. Uh, actually, we are just behind, uh, uh, ahead of uh, the competitors. That's, that's uh, the main reasoning, I, I would say. Thank you very much. The presentation was really very interesting and I just wanted to ask you if you can in a few words elaborate on the parts of the filler words detection and also regarding the minutes and whether the application works for the Armenian language. I mean, for example, regarding the minutes, it would be very useful for the state agencies and state mm -hmm. Um I mean for the government because they, uh, um, after each and every session in the government and the National Assembly, they um, write all whatever is um, mm -hmm. whatever speeches they were, mm -hmm. and it's a very time-consuming actually job. Mm -hmm. And if the uh, this kind of generally, did you have any conversations and discussions with this, with the government, Armenian to, government? You mean? Yeah, reg regarding the collaboration and um, mm, the usage okay. of this kind of because it's it's indeed very useful for them because a lot of job is being done hand by hand. Mm -hmm regarding the minis and the other stuff. Um, I'm sure that it will be useful not only for governments. Uh, actually, at Chris, we also 
uh, write down meeting minutes after uh, important calls, and we will be our customers as well in this sense. Um, uh, at this moment, we work on American English conversations uh, only. Th that would be the prototype, actually, for, for uh, the problem, the solution, and um, the idea. Um, next, if we uh, tr collect data in Armenian or any other language, we can um, do and uh, do the same on other languages. But the, the first uh, would be in American English. I mean, for example, regarding the state, um, the government meetings, they are mm -hmm. live streamed. Whether this can be used as the data for developing. Uh, uh, will will they share the data with us? Uh, they they live stream and all the videos are. I mean, these are videos available mm -hmm. in YouTube. Okay, mm, but actually, uh, the data for uh, for solving this problem is the audio stream, um, maybe with video and uh, the uh, text itself. So that's not a data for uh, uh, that that can't be used as a data for solving this problem. Thank you.